We would like to take you on a journey, even if only briefly, so that you can understand what is happening right now in the world that is intermediate between the earthly world and the eternal world, the world called Barzak. What are the dead doing in it right now? There are things going on in the world of Barzak that are worth finding out. One day, the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, had a dream in which he saw what was happening to people in the world of Barzak. And this dream of the prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, was the absolute truth from God. So he said the following, and these words are narrated from Samu bin Jundab. May Allah be pleased with him. After completing the morning prayer, the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, who turned to face us, would often ask, Which of you had a dream this night? And if anyone saw something, he would narrate his dream, and the Prophet, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, would say, How good! One day he again asked Us, Did any of you have a dream? We replied, No. Then he said, And I this night saw in a dream two men who came to me, took me by the hands, and carried me to the Holy Land. There I saw a man sitting, and the other stood beside him with an iron hook in his hand, which he thrust into the corner of the sitting man's mouth, tearing his cheek all the way to the back of his head. Then he would do the same with the other corner of the mouth, and in the meantime the torn cheek would be fused, after which he would return to it again and do the same thing. I asked, What is it? And they said, Go. We again went on our way and did not stop until we reached a man lying prostrate. At his head stood another man holding a stone or a piece of rock in his hand and smashing the head of the lying man with it. And after he'd struck him, the stone was rolled aside, and this man went to the stone to take it. And no sooner had he returned to the man who was lying down than his head was already put back together, taking its former form, and he struck him again. I asked, Who is this? And they said, Go. We set off again and walked until we reached an opening like a furnace, the upper part of which was narrow and the lower part wide. A fire was blazing below, and when it approached them, they rose so high that they almost jumped out, and when the fire subsided, they went back again, and there were naked men and women there. I asked, Who are they? And they said, Go. We set out again, and walked until we reached a river in which instead of water flowed blood. In it stood a man, and in the middle of the river, or on the bank of the river, opposite to the one who was in it, stood another man with stones in front of him. When the person who was in the river wanted to get out of it, the other man threw a stone right into his mouth, bringing him back to his place. And every time he tried to get out, he threw a stone into his mouth, and he returned to his former place. I asked me, what is it? And they said, go. We set off again and walked, until we reached a green garden where a huge tree grew, at the foot of which sat some old man with his children. And near the tree I saw another man keeping a fire burning in front of him. Then my companions lifted me up to this tree and led me into a house more beautiful than any I had ever seen, and in which there were elders, young men, women, and children. Then they took me out from there and lifted me up the tree higher and brought me into another house, which was even more beautiful and better than the first, and in which there were elders and young men. I said to my companions, You have led me with you tonight, and now tell me what I have seen. They said, Yes. As for the one whose mouth was torn open before your eyes, he's a liar who spoke false words which spread from him everywhere, and now they will do this to him until the day of resurrection. The one whose head was smashed before your eyes, Allah taught him the Qur'an, but he slept at night, and did not adhere to its rulings during the day, and now it will be done to him until the day of resurrection. Those whom thou sawest in the opening were adulterers, and those whom thou sawest in the river were usurers. The old man who sat at the foot of the tree was Ibrahim, 
peace be upon him. The children around him were the offspring of men, and the man who kept the fire going was Malik, the keeper of hell. The first house into which you have entered is for the ordinary believers, and as for the second house, it is the house of those who have fallen for the faith. I am Jibril, this is Mikahil, and now raise your head. When I raised my head, I saw a kind of cloud above me, and they said, This is your place, I exclaimed, let me occupy it. But they said, Verily, thy life is not yet complete, and when it is finished, thou shalt take thy place. In another authentic hadith, the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, narrated what happens to a person when he is put in the grave. It is reported that the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Verily, after a believer is laid in his grave, an angel comes to him and asks him, Whom did you worship? And if Allah has led him in a straight path, he will say, I worshipped Allah. The angel will ask, What did you say about this man? He will reply, He is a slave of Allah and his messenger, and he will ask him no more about anything beyond that, after which he will go with him to the house which was prepared for him in the fire. Then the angel will say to him, This is your house which was prepared for you in the fire, but Allah has protected and pardoned you and replaced it for you with a house in paradise. Then that believer will say, let me go and make my family happy, and he will be told, Do not be troubled. And verily, when an unbeliever is laid in his grave, an angel comes to him who treats him roughly and asks, Whom did you worship? The man replies, I don't know. Then he's told, You neither knew nor read that his brothers and sisters, such a person has not followed the scripture and has not lived according to it. Then he will be asked, what did you say about this man? He will reply, I only repeated what people said, and then he will be struck with an iron hammer between his ears, and he will utter a shout that will be heard by all except men and jinn. The Almighty says in the Quran, Eldar supports the believers with a firm word in the worldly life and the last life. Also the messenger of God, peace and blessings be upon him, also said in another authentic hadith, Verily, when a believing slave of Allah leaves the worldly life and is on the threshold of the hereafter, angels with faces as bright as the sun descend from the sky to him. They bring with them a shroud and incense from paradise and sit near him. Then the angel of death comes to him and sits down at his headboard and says, O pure soul, come out to meet Allah's forgiveness and favor. And it leaves his body just as a drop flows out of the neck of a vessel. The angel of death takes that soul. And after that, not a moment passes before other angels, without leaving it in his hands, take it and clothe it in that shroud of incense. Then the soul begins to fragrance, as if emitting the most beautiful scent of musk that can be found on earth. Then the angels take the soul to heaven, and they do not pass by the hosts of angels, lest they ask, Whose beautiful soul is this? They are answered, Of such and such, the son of such and such. They call him by the most beautiful names with which he was called in life. Finally, they reach the first heaven and ask for the gates to be opened, and the gates are opened. The angels of each heaven escort the soul to the next heaven until it reaches the seventh heaven. Then Allah, the Great and Almighty, says, Inscribe the news of my slave in the upper heavens of paradise in Iliyun, and return my slave to the earth, for I created them from it. Into it I will return them, and from it I will bring them forth once more and his soul is returned to the earth. Then two angels come to him, who seated him and asked him, Who is your Lord? He replies, My Lord is Allah. They ask, What is your religion? He answers, My religion is Islam. They again ask, What kind of man was sent to you? He replies, It was the messenger of Allah, they ask. How then did you act? He replies, I read the book of Allah, and believed in it, and was faithful to it. Then a voice from heaven proclaimed, My slave is truthful, 
Spread for him a bed of paradise, dress him in paradise garments, and open for him the gates to paradise. Paradise favors and fragrances are brought to him, and his grave is enlarged as far as his eyes can see. Then a man with a beautiful countenance, wearing a delightful garment, fragrant with a pleasant aroma, appears before him and says, I will tell you something that will delight you. This day has been promised to you. The believer asks, Who are you? Is your countenance the countenance of one who brings goodness? The one replies, I am your favors. Then he says, My lord, hasten the hour, my lord, hasten the hour, so that I may return to my family and regain my wealth. And verily, when a disbelieving servant of Allah parteth from the worldly life and is on the threshold of the hereafter, angels with black faces descend to him from the sky, bringing with them a sackcloth and sit near him. Then... The angel of death comes to him and sits down at his headboard and says, O oh, wicked soul, come out to meet the wrath and indignation of Allah. And then the soul of the disbeliever spreads over his body, and the angel of death plucks it out just as a spit with prongs is plucked out of wet wool. The angel of death cleans it up, and not even a moment passes before the other angels, without leaving it in his hands, take it away and clothe it in sod, which they have brought with them, and it begins to spew out the foulest stench that can be found on earth. Then the angels ascend with her into heaven, and they do not pass by the hosts of angels, lest they should inquire, Whose is this foul soul? They are answered, of such and such a one, the son of such and such a one. They call him, by the most disgraceful names he was called in his lifetime. When they reach the first heaven, and ask for the gate to be opened, it is not opened for him. Then the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, recited an ayat from the Qur'an, The gates of heaven shall not be opened before them. Surah 7, Ayat 40, so sessant. Then Allah, the Great and Almighty, will say, Write the news of him in the Sijin that is in the lowest land. The angels hurl his soul to the earth, and it is returned to his body. Then two angels, these angels are called Munkar and Nakir, come to him, who sit him down and ask him, Who is your Lord? He mumbles, Mmm, I don't know. They ask, What is your religion? He mumbles, mmm, mmm, I don't know. They again ask him, who was that man who was sent to you? He mumbles, mmm, mmm, I don't know. Then a voice from heaven proclaims, my servant has lead, spread for him a bed of fire, and open for him the gatis of hell. The infernal heat and the fiery wind of Samum approach him and his grave narrows so much that his ribs move, and then a man with a hideous countenance, wearing a hideous garment, from which a rotten odor emanates, appears before him and says, I am going to tell you something that will grieve you. This day was promised to you. The one asks him, Who are you? Your face is evil. He will say, I am your wicked deeds. And he exclaims, My lord, do not let the hour come. That is, brothers and sisters, such a person knows that when the day of judgment comes, it will be his lamentable end. Allah Almighty, most holy and great, also says in the Holy Quran, when death comes to any of them, he says, O Lord, bring me back. Perhaps I will perform the righteous deeds which I had discarded. But no, those are just words he utters. There will be a barrier behind them until the day when they are resurrected. The Almighty has narrated about the state of a man who made omissions and committed unjust deeds before his death. When such a person sees the end awaiting him and is convinced of the wickedness of his deeds, he will regret bitterly what he has done and ask Allah to return him to the worldly life. He will not want to return to enjoy worldly pleasures and indulge his base desires. He will want to make up for his missed favors and fulfill his duties to Allah. However, it will be impossible for him to return to the worldly life, and he will not be granted a reprieve, because Allah has said that people are not destined to return to the earthly world after death.
As for the souls of the martyrs, Shahids, the following happens to their souls. It is reported that the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, Verily, the souls of the Shahids are inside the green birds, which have lanterns suspended under the throne. They feed in paradise wherever they wish, and then return to these lanterns. One day, their Lord looked at them and asked, Do you desire anything? They replied, What else can we desire, for we feed in paradise wherever we wish? Uh, and he asked them this three times, realizing that they would be asked in this way. Each of them said, O Lord, we desire that thou shouldst return our souls to our bodies, that we may return to that world and once more be slain in thy way. When he saw that they had no need, they were forsaken. Martyrs include the following categories of people, as indicated by authentic hadiths. One who fell ill and died of plague. One who drowned. One who fell ill and died of pleurisy. Pleurisy is an inflammatory process in the area of the pleural, sheets, visceral and parietal, in which fibrin deposits form on the surface of the pleura, the membrane covering the lungs, and then adhesions form, or different types of effusion accumulate inside the pleural cavity, one who died due to a disease of the stomach, one who was burnt, and one who died under the debris, and a woman who died due to pregnancy, whether she died and the child in her belly, or she died after giving birth to the child, from the consequences thereof. And verily a man after his death ceases to be rewarded for his good deeds, except for the three that are mentioned in the authentic hadith. It is narrated from Abu Hurairah, may Allah be pleased with him, that the Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings of Allah be upon him, said, When a person dies, all, his deeds cease, except three, continuous almsgiving, knowledge that can be enjoyed by other people, or a righteous child who will make supplications to Allah on his behalf. The meaning of this hadith is that a person's good deeds cease to be recorded after death, except for these three things, since he is the cause of them. The child he raised and educated and will pray for him. The knowledge he has left behind him, for example. If a man has made any scientific discovery, he will receive for everyone who makes use of it, or has taught someone something useful, or has built a school. He will receive a reward for everyone who learns something useful in it. And permanent alms. If a person has done something that is useful after his death, such as if a person has built a hospital, or helped in its construction, or built a bridge, and so on, we ask Allah for help and protection. Peace be upon you, Allah's mercy, and blessings be upon you, dear brothers and sisters.